everyone, welcome to the session. So up to this point, we went through bracketing methods, we went through the bisection method and the false position method, and we also went through uh, the first type of open method, which is the Newton-Raphson method. And with the Newton-Raphson, we knew that we defined xr using this expression here. We needed xi, and we needed the function at xi, and we needed the derivative at xi. And we also described that the Newton-Raphson is unlike the bisection and the false position, is that with the Newton-Raphson, I need to know the derivative or the first derivative of my function. Well, let's assume in this case that the first derivative of my function is inconvenient or difficult to get. Can I still get an approximation for my root? Can I still uh, find a solution for that derivative? Well, and the answer is yes, because with, with Taylor series, we use Taylor series to approximate derivatives, right? We approximated the first derivative using three techniques, the forward finite difference and the backward finite difference and the centered finite difference. So despite the fact that we're going to assume that we don't know how to get our derivative, we can approximate it, right? And we're going to approximate it in this way uh, using the backward finite difference, if you remember, is basically f of xi minus 1 minus f of xi divided by the distance between these two points, right? So the point I'm interested in, which is xi, and a point backwards to it, which is f of xi minus 1. And if you remember also, what I meant by um, xi minus 1 is basically a certain distance backwards to xi, and we define that distance by the letter h. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this approximation, this equation, I'm going to plug it up in this neutral Raphson equation that we developed in the last lesson. And this will stay in the denominator and this will be it will go up in the numerator. And I, I end up with this expression that I have here. And this becomes uh, what we will call the secant method. So what is the secant method? Well, it's basically the newton raphson method in which the derivative is approximated using the backward finite difference. That is the only difference, that is basically the only difference between the neutron raphson and the secant method. Secant method is just merely we're approximating the derivative now. So given that we know that, so in this lesson we are going to actually write a program to deal with the same function that we dealt with, also the same approximate error of 0.1%. And also after we're done with this, we're going to compare, after we approximate the derivative, how does the results compare to the neutron raphson and you can really predict that from now. So with the neutral raphson we're using exact derivatives, right? And now we're approximating. So with approximations, we do predict that they're going to give less accurate uh, results. But we're going to see this using numbers now. So I already created a sheet here named secant. And since we already know that uh, the neutral raphson and secant the only difference between them is now I'm approximating the derivative. I'm going to copy the code, and we know that the code is going to be very similar. So the first change is I'm going to get rid of the derivative because we're assuming we don't know what the derivative is. Uh, the second change is now we're defining xr uh, differently, right? Because the xr now that we're defining um, has an approximation for the derivative. Uh, so it's still xi, and it's still um, fi, and we're going to multiply the numerator by uh, now um, xi minus h minus xi and can I get rid of that? It's going to be f of xi minus h minus f of xi. I'm going to close parentheses here. All right, perfect. So now I also, the only uh, difference again is we have to define what h is. And I'm going to define the step size initially as 0.5. And if you remember, uh, uh, the those derivatives, the backward, forward, and centered, are sensitive to h in terms of accuracy. And we saw in the Taylor series and first derivatives is that um, as I lower the step size, I get more and more accurate derivatives. So you can play with this h to get a more and more accurate approximation, which means it's going to lead to a more accurate uh, root. 
So now I'm actually done with my code, and here I use my uh, first uh, guess to be zero. And if you remember with the Raphson, since we have two roots here, it's going to get the root that is uh, closer in proximity to it, which is going to be the negative one. And since I'm using a distance of 0.5 between uh, both points, I'm using the backward finite difference, which means my two points are going to be zero and um, negative 0.5 in this case. So actually, let's run our code and see uh, what numbers we're going to get. Let me check this if this is written correctly. Everything looks fine. All right, perfect. So we see that we, we got six, uh, it took us six iterations, and we uh, got to an approximate error of 0 0.018, and we found our root at negative one. And again, the uh, true error here are all over the place because that is defined in terms of the root two. So that's actually defined in terms of the negative one root, um, and that should fix it. All right, perfect. So um, let's actually take this and let's compare it to the neutron Raphson. So let's see, we took six iterations and we reached a approximate error of 0 0.018. But with the neutron Raphson, we took five and we reached a much lower approximate error of 0 0.005. And we actually had a true error, so we actually uh, reached our exact root. So you can see by using an approximation for the derivative, it did add some error and we can see that from the difference between 0 0.018 and the difference between 0 0.005. So now that we approximated the root at negative 1, how about we go to the uh, root 2. So let's assume, say, our approximation is 1.5. Let's still uh, use the uh, uh, h of 0.5. And since we're using backward finite difference, basically we're using 1.5 and 1 to approximate what our derivative is. And let's adjust this um, true error, and let's put it put two here, and let's run our code and see um, how it's going to perform. All right, so it took uh, five iterations, and it went to an approximate error of 0 0.044, and it reached very close to what our root is, which is two. And again, if we compare this to Neutral again, Neutral is more superior, again, because we're using an exact derivative as opposed to an approximate derivative. And here we have an approximate error of 0 0.005, and here we have an approximate error of 0 0.044. Now, to recap what we did in this lesson, in this lesson we uh, introduced a new method to find roots of equations, which is the secant method. And the secant method is basically the newton raphson method in which we approximate the derivative using the backward finite difference. And we explained that um, because we're using the approximation, we are going to um, have a lesser accurate um, uh, solution compared to the newton raphson And we saw this by comparing the approximate error between the, um, the secant method and the newton raphson method. Uh, well, and also, uh, the code wasn't much different from the Nutrafson, so the Nutrafson had the definition of the derivative, but with the secant, we took that away because we're assuming we don't know what the derivative is. Um, with the Nutrafson, this is how we define R. The change in this code is now we're defining R uh, with the backward finite difference approximation, which is this equation down here. And also, since we're using the approximation, we're going to have to define h and we define the h here as uh, 0.5. Well, that marks the end of this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson.